Hi everybody, we're here in the home kitchen of our chef Alyssa Bradley with Grateful Grays and she's getting ready to prepare a dish for us. So tell us what you're fixing, Alyssa. So we have our own Grateful Grays short ribs here and we are gonna braise them. Um, but first we're gonna start by dredging them in some flour and in that flour I have some salt, pepper, and rosemary. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to dredge them and then we're gonna take it over to my stove and braise them. So now that we're gonna dredge the short ribs, I wanted to tell you a little bit about them. Uh, they are pretty meaty, but they have a lot of connective tissue, so it's best that you prepare them by braising, which we're gonna do. So now I'm gonna start by dredging them. I'll take one of them here and put them in the flour, just kind of push it down a little bit and then rotate it onto the other side. And then I'm gonna to continue to do that with the rest of them. Okay. okay, so the trick to know if your oil is ready is to get your hand a little wet and just flick it in there. And you can hear it starting to pop. So that's the way to tell when your oil's ready. So I'm gonna add the short ribs in. Yeah. Okay, so while we're waiting for our ribs to braise, I thought I'd give you a little culinary fact. This is what we call mirepoix, and it's 50% onion, 25% celery, and 25% carrot. And it really gives a nice aroma and flavor to the overall dish. What are we checking for there, Alyssa? We're checking for brownness, and it's about there. I'm getting ready to flip them right now. So that has a nice caramelized color, and we're gonna wait for that to appear on the other side, and then we're gonna remove it from the pan. Okay, to preheat the oven? Yes, preheating the oven to 300 degrees, and the short ribs are about done, so I'm gonna remove them and place them on the platter. That's a nice color, that's what you're aiming for on both sides. So I just removed the ribs from the pan and I'm going to set them off to the side. And then I'm going to add the mirepoix, but before I add the mirepoix, I did lower the heat that way the oil doesn't splatter. So I'm going to go ahead and add it. Gonna make sure it gets a good coat of oil, and then I'm gonna let it saute for a couple minutes. So, Alyssa, I see you have some garlic here waiting to go in. When will that be added? That will be added just as the onion, celery, and carrot are starting to brown. Um, that way, since the garlic is so much smaller it will burn a lot faster. So we just wanna wait till the end to put the garlic in. Okay, so you guys can see how there are some burnt pieces at the bottom of the pan, and that's okay. Um, that'll actually add a lot of flavor. All right, so 
so you guys can take a look at our mirror plot. It's starting to become transparent and really look tender. So I'm gonna add um, about a tablespoon of minced fresh garlic. And we'll save the rest for our broccoli. Just mix that around and I'll give it about a minute just until you can really start to smell and see that the garlic's browning. Okay, so after our garlic has started to brown and you can really smell it, um, you're gonna wanna add your short ribs. Back into the pan, I'm gonna turn off the heat. And since we are cooking for four, I'm going to put them pretty close together, but it would probably be best if you had them farther apart just so they cooked a little more evenly. Okay, we've got them all in the pan. Yep, and now I'm gonna add the beef stock, and I have about 30 ounces of beef stock. Kinda just depends on how much liquid you want as a sauce at the end. You can see that covers it nicely, so you'll know that everything cooks pretty evenly. I'm going to add that into the oven. Covered or uncovered? We're going to go uncovered. I may end up covering it to help it cook a little faster. So it's been about two hours now and I ended up covering the pot um, because I wanted to make sure the moisture stayed in. So I'm going to pull it out. I'll let you take a look to see. You can see that they're starting to separate from the bone. There's a lot of good juice left behind. So our next step is we're going to remove the ribs and strain all of the vegetables out and use the juice for a sauce. I put the meat in here and have it tented and then we're gonna strain the vegetables so we can use the juice for the sauce. So this will be loaded with flavor. We'll thicken it with a roux, which is even parts butter with even parts flour. And traditionally, it is one ounce of roux to eight ounces of liquid. And in our case, the liquid is juice. All right, so we're back at the stove and we have all the juice back in our stock pot. And here is my roux. I did that while we were waiting for it to cook. And like I said earlier, it's flour and butter. So I'm gonna add it in. And it's supposed to be pretty thick, kind of like a paste. And this will act as a thickening agent for the sauce.
whisk it in and we'll see what it looks like in about five to ten minutes as far as thickness. Okay, so after two hours, we finally have our short ribs. And we did short ribs with a side of broccoli and cauliflower and parsnip puree. And then we used the sauce um, from the short ribs to make a gravy. So we're ready to enjoy.